This is Felicia Olan, and you're welcome to the program. Can you give us a little bit of background information on how you go into the food agriculture sector? When I graduated in 1987, I served my NYC in a food company, and Lemons Foods precisely. So after my first year um, as a copper, I was um, admitted into you know, full staff in 1988 and um, this started in the stores division of Lebanese Foods. This had to do with food, um, processed food, fresh food, um, household goods um, and anything you could do, value addition. Um, we had uh, a fast food outlet, we had a restaurant where the goods we sold, the food items like the processed food and the confectionery were put together to make meals then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, it was a good start for me. And that was actually what um, endeared me to the food industry. Because I'd seen it from start to the end consumer. And um, I stayed in this industry for about 23 years. So when you were at UTC, you worked on the agri Transformation Agenda with then Minister Dr. Akimu Adishina. Yes. He worked on the Cassava Bread Initiative. Can you tell us more about the Cassava Bread Initiative? Well, it was put out there to promote the inclusion of HQCF, cassava flour, in confectionery and baked goods. And the idea was that if the uptake was increased, um, farmers of cassava would grow their markets and um, there will be more demand for cassava. Therefore, that way you find out that farmers can be empowered more financially because they sell more, they make more money, and then they turn over whatever they realize from the export. So how come this project has not been sustainable with the new government? It is sustainable, but they are approaching it from a different angle, using a new model. During the transformation agenda, the idea then was to encourage bakeries to include HBC flour in the flour constituents of their recipes. And uh, this was done you know, with several bakeries. And uh, they moved up another level to now get flour mills to actually blend the cassava flour at the point of production. And uh, this way the uptake is higher, is bigger because the flour mills uh, output is quite high and the demand is higher. A flour mill that serves like 60 bakeries will definitely take more cassava flour mm -hmm. than going from baker to baker. And then um, some of the flour mills, the two major ones, have come up with them composite flour that already has 10% cassava flour blended in it. And uh, I think this is the right step. I think this um, is actually an icing on the cake of the previous project because this way when you have the composite flour you don't need to you save time from blending cassava and wheat it's already blended together mm -hmm. so that means you save money on manpower you save production time mm -hmm. and then all those little bits add up to increasing your bottom line so in 2014 having spent over 26 years in the food industry and gets to the top of the food industry. You were awarded the Officer of the Order of the Niger Award for the impact you've made in the food sector. How was that? I'm sure that must have been rewarding and amazing. That was amazing and um, particularly at that time, it um, gave me so much fulfillment and um, just crowned my efforts over these years. So I was extremely delighted and it's something I really cherish because my long suffering in the sector paid off. That's amazing. So you worked from farm to the market end, yes. adding value, value chain. Can you talk about some of the projects you worked on then? Okay. Well, I've worked on projects that have to do with taking data from farmers on what their challenges are and what they think um, the government or the developmental organizations can do to help them resolve these challenges. I've worked on 
coming up with what processors can do to ensure that you know the products they come out with meet the standards of industrial users because um, there are so many SMEs processors who are rolling out different products and the idea is for them to get um, commercial quantities taken up by organizations that are to production they must come up with quality products that meet the quality control specifications of those organizations so I've worked with um, these SMEs to find out what challenges make them come out with substandard products if they do, uh, how they manage their waste, do they recycle to make sundry income to increase their bottom line, and whether they even have access to the product specifications of their target market. So I work with them on that, and because of my experience, I'm able to support and guide them on what they should look out for in terms of product specifications so that they meet the specifications of the commercial users who will buy the products from them in large quantity. So after working for over 26 years, you created Contact Consulting. Yes. Can you tell us more about Contact Consulting? Well, Contact Consulting is um, a business advisory and research firm which has also stepped up to, to um, investment promotion. We also carry out um, advocacy on projects to educate the public on the benefits of adopting best practice. And um, contact consulting came about um, as a result of my experience in the food industry because I realized that for you to make the right investment decisions, you need to have clarity on market realities. Uh, a lot of people invest without really having the, the grassroots knowledge and information on what's happening in the market. So you need to know what the market realities are for you to even determine which investments are going to be profitable or not. So Quota Consulting helps with that. We help organizations gain insight into you know, data that would assist in those um, investment decisions. What we also do is that because we realize that you know there are targets for organizations, we try to bridge the gap between the investment hypothesis and um, actionable models that are based on data that can help move organizations forward, especially in the food industry. And you know, agriculture is at the back end of food processing. So imagine the data from production to end market is quite important. So those are the things we do. We link um, producers to markets. We link markets to producers and producers to raw material sources. Can you tell us some of the projects you've worked on? Well, I've worked, um, we've worked on several projects. We've collaborated with um, Dalbert Global Advisors on the report on commercial opportunities for cassava in Nigeria, Ghana, and Mozambique. We also worked um, with the World Economic Forum on the rice project. We developed fact sheets for the investment sessions. And then um, we came up with um, a strategy for the rice industry in ECOWAS. We have also worked with um, CAVA, Cassava Added Value for Africa. This is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we help them in strategy and um, data gathering and analysis, especially in the development of the confectionery industry as well. The application of um, cassava flour to different recipes. So you're actually one of the judges on the cassava on the Rockefeller Foundation Cassava Youth Wise Challenge. This was to tackle the post harvest loss issue with cassava. Can you share more insight on that? A million dollars or thereabout was put out then um, in a challenge to encourage innovation and deep thinking 
on how the issue of post-harvest losses in cassava can be resolved. And then um, so many ideas came up and the judging panel was put together to analyze the different innovations that came up um, based on different ranking models to come up with the one that is practical, applicable, um, accessible, and that can be implemented within a short period of time. And um, we narrowed down from over 500 um, shortlisted 500 people okay. over 500 really okay. shortlisted okay. um, solutions that were preferred to select the winners mm -hmm. for the competition. It was a great honor for me to have served on that panel. Can you share some of the um, ideas from the competitors? Some um, proposed um, refrigeration, some proposed powering the refrigeration with mm -hmm. solar power. Some propose the use of um, special bags to protect the cassava after harvesting. And some um, propose them using a special coating on the cassava tubers to keep them fresher for longer. You're also the program director for Agro Innovate. Can you tell us more about Agro Innovate? Agro Innovate West Africa is a leading trade show. Um, that brings together players in the agribusiness sector. And it is funded by Informer Group United Arab Emirates. I'm the program director for the project in Nigeria. And every year, under one roof, um, not less than 20 countries participate in this trade show. And then last year we had 3,500 plus delegates attend the two-day event wow. and um, this year we're looking to receiving about 5,000. Okay. So what happens is that we bring together um, players in the agribusiness sector from not less than 10 value chains every year, right from farm to processing and marketing. And the idea is to link the different players and the different segments together so that you know we, re we remove the, the cost of linking people to people by bringing them together on one table to resolve common problems, look for alignments, look for synergies and build partnerships. How many years have you done Agro Innovate in Nigeria? This is going to be the fifth year. Oh wow, that's been amazing stuff. Yes, this is a great show. And um, so many testimonies abound from those who have benefited from attending the show. I've, I've attended a couple of years and I can just say, just amazing network, good people. People, you, you, you hear different stories and you're like, wow, this person is doing this. So amazing, congrats on that. So can we talk more about Seed Connect? Right. Seed Connect is, um, is our latest show. We are partners and consultants to the Nigerian Agricultural Seed Council on Seed Connect. And we were asked to come up with the concept, the brand name mm -hmm. and the agenda, which we did and then um, what it's about is bringing together stakeholders in the seed sector to come together, do a kind of stock taking. We had a very successful Seed um, Connect conference and exhibition in Abuja earlier this year, the first one in the series, and um, it afforded the stakeholders in the seed industry the opportunity to come together and um, discuss like I said, the gaps that have been noticed um, based on the different interventions and initiatives that have tried to address the seed sector problems in the past. Reason being that seed is the foundation of the food industry and agriculture. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to solve the problem of um, food security, you need to tackle it right from the seeds. So that's why Seed Connect is um, quite important. Um, that's the foundation on which the agriculture will be built. We had a very successful outing 
the Honorable Minister of Agriculture was present and um, it was a great show. We had um, the High Commissioners of India and two other countries present and we had the Vice President of the Presidential Initiative on the Food Security, the Governor of Kebi State also present. And at the end of it, we came up with a roadmap on the way forward on how to support the seed industry. We also discussed the issue of policy and how this has um, impacted the seed industry. Um, we discussed ex extensively um, the seed yield. We discussed extensively how this would impact the industry and help in the regulation of quality of seeds that are produced or imported into the country. We also spoke at length on the research and development and the role this will play in coming out with better varieties that would give higher yields and ultimately contribute to resolving the problem of food security. We are also working on another project, Basics. Can you tell us more about Basics? Yeah, for Basics, I'm on the Project Advisory Council of Basics. And Basics is about, is about building economically sustainable cassava seed systems. This project is um, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the idea is to come up with ways through the SH technology of multiplying seeds faster so that you know production time is reduced and you get more seeds out faster and um, create an opportunity for young people to make money from agriculture in the sense that a concept called the village seed entrepreneurs has been introduced whereby um, People who are interested in developing seeds, farmers, can buy seeds from the accredited center, multiply those seeds, and then sell to other people. Mm -hmm. So that's way where you know spreading the the, the the proceeds that should have accrued to just one person, person across person. more people, especially young people, and we're encouraging more women to participate in the project. So you've had over almost 30 years. In career in the food and agriculture sector? Close to 30. I have. Close to 30. Okay. So, what advice do you give any young person, youth out there looking to get into the sector? What advice do you give them? Well, what I'll tell them is they should take decisions based on data because a lot of people are excited about getting into agriculture and they run into it without having an insight on the realities of the market. You're getting into business because you want to make money, make a living and add value, but without data that guide you, without data that show trends, it's difficult for you to make the right decisions. So my advice is, um, no matter how small, they should access the internet, talk to research companies to get data on trends in the respective value chains they, they, they intend to get into before they make investments so that you know they are not making investments based on guesswork they are making investments based on data that is tested and do you think there's any policies the government can do to make the sector investor investment friendly the current government has done a lot um, introducing different models on ease of doing business, uh, which is commendable. But what I think they should do again is to have a very um, aggressive strategy of letting you know the investing community outside Nigeria have access to data to know what is happening. To give them an insight into market realities because people who want to invest are interested in having data on respective value chains trends so i think what the government should do is to encourage um, research companies to work with um, business developers 
to come up with case studies on failed businesses, failed agricultural ventures, and successful ones. And then we can benchmark because if someone wants to invest, they want to know the risks. So if we give them the case studies of thriving and successful um, participants and then those who have failed, it makes it easy for them to take their decisions, make up their minds on whether they want to come in or not. Because most of the time, they only have access to the data of the successes. Mm -hmm. I think data on failures will also help everybody who wants to come into the agricultural sector because that way they know you're giving them a balanced view and um, you're not just window dressing. So I think the government should invest in data banks that will go a step further, you know, to showcase case studies of uh, different agricultural um, investments, failed and successful ones. <laughs> Contact Consulting is a business advisory firm that also is involved into a lot of uh, data mining, data gathering, and data analysis. I'm very passionate about the food industry. I'm very passionate about agriculture. So I focus on agribusiness. So does Contact Consulting. So if you want to know what to do, in the agribusiness space of today, with less or no mistakes, I think you should speak to us. We'll guide you the way forward.